What's up guys, ladies, gentlemen, children of all ages, Day Day here with another gameplay. It's Battlefield 1 this time. And today we're gonna be I'm gonna be giving you some tips. We're gonna be going over some of the things that you can do to help you out throughout this game. Because this game is kinda hard compared to other battlefield games. To start off the guns. There's a significant amount gone. There's not that many guns in this game. Quite frankly, it really sucks. And I wish there was a lot more guns. It's typically like the same gun, just different variants, like three different variants for most guns in this game. And that really sucks because you you think there'd be like a lot of different ones. And I understand like during that time there may not have been that many guns, but this really isn't historically correct for most for the most part it's built more for fun so that's why I wish there was a lot more guns in this game or at least later on they're gonna make all the guns that you have competitive uh, competitive because a lot of these guns there's or a lot of these classes there's only one particular gun per class that you're going to be using mostly because the rest just suck and unless everyone else is running around with it and quite frankly you know they're not you're just gonna be below par if you even run with those and that's just not acceptable Another thing that makes this game a lot harder is that there's no visual cues anymore. What I mean by that is, if you look up in the mini map whenever you're playing all the previous Battlefield games, such as Battlefield 4, Hardline, um, even Bad Company, Bad Company 2, someone's shooting, you look up in a mini map, you can see where they're at. You can't do that on Battlefield 1. It solely relies on the fact that you need to be paying attention to the sounds going on around you, because every single soldier sounds like it's Christmas time, and just come around jingling. So you need to be listening to what they're doing. You need to be listening where the shots are coming from. Whether it, uh, someone you can tell if someone's shooting at you because if the bullet snaps or pops, um, that's a it's a movie reference, by the way. But it's a lot harder to tell where people are coming from, where people are going, or if you're even being shot at versus other battlefield games. Another thing that makes it harder is the vehicles, more specifically the planes. I use like vehicles in other battlefield games, and I don't think the like airplanes were anywhere near this hard. And tack on with that, what makes it even more harder is there's no there's no range mode where you can go out and practice such as you could in Battlefield 4, where you could practice driving the plane, so on and so forth. So a lot of people are wasting these vehicles, which could be used to help change the course of the battle, uh, especially the behemoths or the big freaking drivable things. You don't really get a chance to practice those a lot because you have to be in game to practice it. There's no test range. So that really, really makes it hard to practice. However, with all those bad things thrown out, I don't really call them bad things. That just makes the game really, really, to me, fun and competitive. Whenever I get good at it, at least I know for a fact that I've earned it. It's not like, I don't I hate to even give us comparison today, Call of Duty, where everybody's on the same playing field and it's just it, the skill gap no longer exists in that game. It definitely still exists in this game. And that's what I'm really happy about. I can give some tips today, and that's what I'm going to do to help hopefully make your uh, your gameplay or your experience a little bit better and help throw you up on the, uh, the learning curve so this way you learn a little bit faster. And we're going to start it off with number one. You need to learn the maps. That's always, like, the number one thing to do. Depending on if you're playing Conquest, Rush, Domination, so on and so forth, Learning the maps is going to help you significantly. You're going to know where people are coming from. You're going to understand where people spawn. You're going to understand how the flow of the map actually works itself. Not knowing the map leaves you looking around, trying to figure out where you're at, and try to figure out where the flow of traffic is going to be coming from. So the priority number one is learning the map. And the only way you can do that is by putting in time. Once again, there's no test range, so it's really hard to even get out there and practice without ruining your stats if you really do care about it and most of us kind of do or not most of us the competitive people anyways I'll care about my stats so the only way you're really going to to get to know this map is by playing and dying a lot Tip is learn your class what I mean by that is make sure you're playing whatever class you've picked to the particular way you're supposed to play it An example would be if you're playing medic it's a given you need to be like reviving people there's a lot of times that I've died or my wife has died and no one's revived them. Now I get it. Sometimes running out and trying to revive someone, you're going to get killed. That's the next thing. Make sure if you're going to revive someone that you actually can do it smartly and you're not going to get yourself killed taking away another ticket. There's a, there's a right way of doing this and there's definitely a wrong way. Reviving someone 
if they're in the middle of like gunfire, is just going to cause them to die again, which is annoying. You've seen it in Battlefield 4, so don't do it. Also, don't run out there try to revive someone when, when you're up under gunfire because you're going to die a lot, so don't do that either. Make sure you practice doing it the correct way, reviving them when the coast is clear and throwing down some health or medic packs, I should say, in case they didn't get revived to 100. An example of that would be like Scout. You're playing a sniper. Make sure that after you get a kill or maybe two kills at most, you relocate. Because when you kill someone, they're coming for you. They know where you're at. So you don't have to move a mile away because that's going to get you killed as well. Just make sure you're not in the exact same spot. Because if you're in the exact same spot, that person's coming for you to kill you. But again, if you're moving a mile away from where you just were, chances are you're going to die. Your job is to sit there and be a lookout, recon, take one shot, one kill. Another thing to do that really helps out the team to make sure that you win every game is to tag people. The minimap doesn't work like it used to. People shooting do no longer show up on the minimap, so make sure you're tagging them. Tag the vehicles as well. One thing that sucks is when you run from cover to cover only to find there's a freaking tank coming your way. That really sucks. The other two classes are kind of the same in, in a certain way as assault and support. Support, make sure that you know whenever you go forward in such, such as assault, you're usually with the medic. Scouts should be staying back further because they have their range on their weapon. So typically you're going to have your medic, your, uh, your medic, your support, and your assault all in the same group, taking one point, moving to the next one. So whenever you're doing this, make sure you keep the medic in the back and the assault and the support up in the front. Here's why. If you have the medic in the front and they go down, who revives you guys whenever you go down? Nobody. So make sure you keep them in the back. Assault. Make sure that whenever you see a tank and you want to run out and blow it up by using all your grenades, you make sure the coast is clear. Again, there's no point of giving out uh, free tickets to the enemy so this way you lose the game. Because if you're dead, you can't defend a flag. Support. Another thing is make sure you're giving enough ammo. If you just look at someone and press R1, you can see that they need ammo. An assault class is always going to need ammo, and so is medic. I run out of ammo a lot because I have to like pretty much spam fire my gun because it's semi-automatic to keep up with everyone else. The next tip would be for every class. Make sure you learn the pattern of your gun. Learn the recoil. Because like for example, when I'm playing and it's medic and I'm using uh, the, I can't remember which one it is. It has a 296 round per minute, uh, but if you spam fire, which is, which is okay, but if you spam fire, the recoil goes out of place so it doesn't really help you. So you kinda wanna make sure you're using the gun the way it wants to be used. So this way the recoil stays controllable. And that's the same with any other gun, especially the fully automatics and the support and assault because the recoil is through the roof. If you just like burst fired or tap fired or walk the trigger, there's different terms for it, then typically you'll be able to take down your opponent a lot faster than they'll be able to take you down because a lot of people do not play by these rules. They just hold down the trigger or spray and pray. And if you can control the recoil, then you can control where the bullet goes. This next tip it's really only for the ones who use headsets. But if you're not using a headset, then I don't see how you can play competitively. Make sure you're listening carefully. Again, the emphasis is on the fact that you can no longer see people who are shooting their gun on the minimap. And a lot of people, such as myself, rely on that along with listening. So now I find myself listening really, really closely. And it's saved my butt so many times now because every single soldier, as I stated earlier, sounds like they're just got jingle bells all over them because they're just chiming whenever they run. So you could definitely hear them. Yeah, you're going to hear your, your teammates as well, but just quickly glancing at the mini-map will eliminate the fact whether it is a teammate or not. Because they're, they're, if they're a teammate, they're going to be blue or green, and they're going to be showing up on your mini-map. Whereas if it's an enemy, they're not going to be showing up on your mini-map. And just in case the arcs have been tagged, they're going to be red. So again, make sure you're listening very, very carefully because that will also help you out a lot. All right, these last two tips are crucial. Number one is controlling an area. So many people run around playing Call of Duty in this game, and it will not work. It will get you killed. How do I know? Because I've done it. A lot. I find myself trying to run all over the map only to get killed because I'm trying to quote-unquote find action. The best way to play this game is hold down your spot. Control your area, such as when you're playing Conquest. 
pick a flag. If it's close enough between two, control two flags. If you're able to control that flag for the entire game, you're doing your part. All right. Then the next thing is don't waste vehicles. Airplanes are no longer taxis. No, they were to begin with in other battlefield games, but definitely do not be using these vehicles as taxis because the enemy cannot get it if you don't spawn into it and then get out of it. So if you spawn into it and get out of it because you want to use it as a taxi, now it's available for them, such as a tank. Because if you jump out of a plane, typically it'll smash to the ground and blow up anyways. But if you've got a tank and you just want to use it as a taxi to get to the next spot, then you're just going to give it to the enemy. And now they have another tank that where they would not have that extra one. So make sure you're, if you're going to use the vehicle that you actually stay in it till that you're dead. Don't get out of it. Just die with it. Go down with a tank or the car or truck or whatever. Stay in the vehicle!